Hello and welcome to Center Stage where the lights are shining brightly on the administrators and district leaders of the Sioux Falls School District. We thank you for joining us today. Josh Hall is our guest and we're going to learn all about Josh Hall in the next 30 minutes or so. Um, some very exciting things happening in the career and technical education arena as well as workforce development. So we'll get to those things in just a minute, but um, before we get started, we'll have you do the uh, the soft, I'll throw you the softball question first. I so, appreciate that. Yeah, <laughs> we can just break <laughs> in a little bit here. Um, but tell us about Josh Hall, um, how long you've been with Sioux Falls School District, kind of your path in becoming the principal here at the Career and Technical Education Academy. Sure, sure. Well, I started out as a career and technical education teacher at okay. Patrick Henry Middle School in the Sioux Falls School District. And from there, uh, took the jump into administration, mm -hmm. went over to Axdell Park. It was a middle school yeah. at the time that also housed the Middle School Immersion Center. Mm -hmm. And so I, I played a dual role there as assistant principal of Axdell Park Middle School and the principal of the Middle School Immersion Center, you okay. know, serving students sure. who are new to our country and uh, a really great experience. I learned a lot about, about families that, that were, like I said, new to our country mm -hmm. and, and some of the things that go with that challenge. Right. Uh, from there, I went over to Whittier Middle School and became the head principal at Whittier. Again, another great experience, another great group of kids and families to work with. Um, and then I was presented with, uh, with the next big challenge in moving to the central office as mm -hmm. assistant superintendent uh, of curriculum and instruction. Mm -hmm. um, and I did, I enjoyed that position a lot and, and got to work with, work with some great people, such as yourself. Oh, oh well, <laughs> thank you. Boy, I paid him a few dollars to say that. No, I'm and um, you know there was just I, I missed being around kids I, mm -hmm. I did and, and so the opportunity came up to, to go back to a building and uh, what a great opportunity to get back to the world of career and technical education where I once taught uh, put that together with my passion for administration um, you know getting to work with kids on a daily basis and teachers um, and it's just been a great fit ever since awesome well very good there are certainly a lot of wheels turning in this in this area of career and technical education. Um, how is it different from maybe what interested, interested you as a student in y your own youth? Um, how did you get interested in career and technical education? And um, how did that lead you into, into becoming a teacher? Well, when I think about growing up, and how I learned best as a student. It, it was about hands-on learning, learning by doing. I mean, that's, that was most impactful for me in my educational experience. And so when I started thinking about college, it was, you know, how can I, how can I put that into action and make mm -hmm. that part of the rest of my life? Mm -hmm. And I looked at engineering fields, um, you know, and ultimately decided that, that I wanted to work with kids. And I just had a passion for working with youth. And so then it became, what can I do? to put those two things together and uh, went out to Black Hill State University okay. um, and got, got enrolled in an education program in career and technical education. And uh, from there started teaching in the Rapid City School District, uh, went over to Brandon for a while and then eventually into the Sioux Falls School District. Uh, obviously gaining experiences all along the way, but um, like I said, uh, I get to see kids learn by doing, just, just like how I used to love to learn. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's fun for me and to have an impact that will take them through their, the rest of their life. Right, so I'm guessing um, that the education you received and the, and the opportunities you had in career and tech ed um, as a student have advanced quite a bit since then. Oh yes, there's been a, a number of changes, <laughs> you know, and, and just when I look at this building and the changes that, that take place here, whether it be equipment or you know the training involved in preparing students for what's next beyond high school and careers and fields related to the coursework that we offer here, mm -hmm. um, it, it's it's constantly staying on top of those updates. You know, and we do a great job. Our staff here um, staying involved with industry, staying involved with higher ed. Uh, we have advisory committees uh, that meet at least twice a year to just talk through those very things. You know, how are things changing? What do we need to do to make sure that our kids are prepared after they leave our building and go out into the real world, so to speak, and, and head down the road of a career 
or to higher ed, whether that be two year or four year. Mm -hmm. um, we just want to make sure we're doing everything uh, that aligns with what's out there currently in industry. And, and certainly those changes are, are never ending. <laughs> Always something yeah. new to incorporate, whether that be new technology, new equipment, um, all of those new practices and things like that. And Sioux Falls is a vibrant place to have a school like this where our community is so committed to um, you know, making sure we have a pipeline of, of good quality workers for the future. Um, and there's really been a relationship established between um, businesses and industry and, and the schools and really both benefiting and seeing that it's important to work together. That's correct. You know, this is our eighth year in operation out of the, the Career and Technical Education Academy. And, you know, to put together a facility like this, a vision like this, getting districts um, outside of Sioux Falls involved mm -hmm. and sending mm -hmm. students over here to the Career and Technical Education Academy. Uh, it took a, a dedicated superintendent, a very committed board, mm -hmm. a community who was, who was all in and ready to step up financially and otherwise to support this. It really does. It takes everybody uh, to be involved and supportive and, and our community has done that and they continue to do that and that's one of the things that impresses me so much about the Sioux Falls community. Yeah, so um, there's some daily, there are really awesome things going on here in at the CTE Academy. Um, we have automotive, we have uh, construction, um, we have engineering, we have health sciences, culinary arts, uh, media. I know I'm missing some. What am I missing? <laughs> engineering, uh, engineering, the Academy of Finance. Oh, yes. Um, we have a strong welding program. Yeah. Um, carpentry, I'm not sure if you mentioned carpentry. We yeah. have a couple great community partnerships in carpentry with Habitat for Humanity and the Sioux Falls Housing Foundation. Uh, where our students also get to, to, to get to turn that into a community support project where they, they help out a family in need with a new home mm -hmm. uh, in our community, which is just another neat part of learning at the Career and Technical Educa Education Academy. So we yeah. do, we have 12 different programs in all. Wow. And, um, you know, we're increasing every year those programs that are connected to dual and concurrent credit mm -hmm. so we can give those students a head start on, on whatever their future holds as far as two-year or four-year programming or sometimes it's certificates and just right. extended training in different areas but we want them we want to help them take them you know take them to that next level right. and whether that means more training or connecting them with an employer while they're in high school uh, whatever we can do to make them more more employable and give them a better idea of where they can head with their life right. down the career road. Right. I know we hear um, collectively as a society we talk about you know kids having going to college and having almost a lifetime of debt um, and maybe they came out of college still not sure that that was really what they were meant to do or wanted to do. And so these hands-on opportunities while they're in high school give them um, a jump start on, on really knowing, is this something I'm gonna like to do for my career for the next you know, 30 years, 40 years, whatever. Um, so it really plays a, a pretty pivotal role in helping a student decide what they wanna do because it, it's an opportunity for them to try it and if they like it, move forward. If not, try something else. Boy, you're spot on with that, Deanne, you really are. And one of the initiatives that we're getting rolling this year as well is growing and expanding our internship program. And along with that, job shadows, uh, pre-apprenticeships, and really it's, it's, it's people in peer, it's the governor's office, the Department of Labor, the Department of Education, you know, our local businesses and the chamber and the development foundations, along with a, a, a great deal of support from our superintendent and our board. Um, it's really about creating another pathway for our students mm -hmm. and again giving them more information so they're making more informed decisions about what to do after high school so they're not building up a bunch of uh, student loan debt mm -hmm. that they don't need to, to build up. You know they, right. they, they know what they want to do and they know what their passions are and how those connect to careers and uh, or a two-year degree or a two-year program, four-year degree. Um, or like I said, other training and certificates. Mm -hmm. so. so what are you looking for? I know um, it, it'll be a constant uh, flow of need in terms of connecting kids with businesses 
that have internship opportunities available? What's expected of the business if they're going to have an intern or an apprentice or, or what have you? Um, what are what are you telling businesses and how, if they're interested, how can they step up to help? Well, we're reaching out to them and they're reaching out to us. We have great workforce needs in our area. I mean, we have some great employers um, and we have a need for employees. You know, we have students who have incredible talents. And so really it comes down to just making that match. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk to an employer about hosting an intern or being open to a student coming out for a job shadow, you know, a job shadow is really more of that uh, maybe a two, three hour experience of kind of looking over the shoulder of someone at, uh, at that workplace and just seeing what it's all about. Mm -hmm. um, the internship, you know, we're looking at eight to 14 weeks um, where they are, are jumping in and, and getting their hands dirty, so to speak. Sure. Uh, they are doing, they are doing that work, they are doing that job right alongside uh, the other employees for that organization. Mm -hmm. um, they're truly getting to know what it means to be in that career, be mm -hmm. in that field. And so that's kind of that difference. And I tell you what, the employers in our area have sure been stepping up. I mean, Good. they are. They, they have talked uh, about that need and now this program is, is up and going and growing and, and they're coming to the plate and they're opening their doors for our students and that's sure appreciated. I know our students appreciate it. Uh, sure. Our families and you know our everyone at the school district level as well. It's it's the right thing to do for kids. It right. really is. It's a so let's talk about that program specifically. And I know it's it's a relatively new program that the governor has um, dedicated uh, some is it career coaches or that are going to be working with students. And then in the same vein, and maybe you can lead into this the the grant um, that was received by. Southeast Tech and Sioux Falls School District from City to help us do this and um, have those people that can help us with those matches. Yes. So as I mentioned earlier, the governor's office. This is one of uh, one of the governor's big initiatives as well. And um, through the Department of Labor, he has created 12 new positions in the state of South Dakota in four different communities. And Sioux Falls will get you know four or five of those positions. They're called career advisors. Okay. And um, through the City Foundation grant, as you had mentioned, a partnership between Southeast Technical Institute and the Sioux Falls School District, uh, we were able to add. Uh, we we call it a career coach. Uh, it will be very similar in mm -hmm. nature as far mm -hmm. as what they're what they're going to do with our students and how they're going to serve our students. Uh, we were also able to add uh, an internship coordinator. Mm -hmm. And so a couple extra people who really can spend a great deal of time focusing on creating those pathways for kids and creating those connections. Um, it, it takes time to mm -hmm. just sit down with businesses and explain to them what this means, you know, what it is and what it isn't, and, and what are your responsibilities and the expectations, and what do you have to gain from it along with what does the student have to gain from this and right. just really having open conversations and then taking the time to set all of that up and, and coordinate it. Um, so, I mean, that's a great thing, you know, and, and those, those positions from the Department of Labor will, will start here shortly. Um, our career coach, we're, we're hoping to get going here next week, actually. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so very quickly, we did interviews um, uh, just two days ago okay. uh, and had some great candidates. That was actually a, a fun day of interviewing. Wonderful. So. You know, again, that's more resources that, that are going to help create this pathway for students. And it really is, it's about uh, support uh, all the way from peer, you know, and, and in many departments in peer, all the way down to the local level and businesses and our school board and superintendent and all those at the central office. Super exciting time for, for students to be mm -hmm. able to say, hey, you know, this is um, something that, you know, maybe five years ago a student didn't have the opportunity to get as deep into a an industry or a business to to really see what was going on. I know we've had previous um, job shadow programs and things like that, and um, but our needs in the community are different than they were five years ago or ten years ago, and um, so it's really like you said, making that match between interests by students and businesses who have that need. Yeah, super great. <laughs> yeah, it's an exciting time. It really is. There's there's a lot going on, and a lot of good things for kids happening. You know, and that's what I'm most excited about. And you know, helping 
kids find their way right. and um, giving giving them opportunities to make more informed decisions about their future. Right. So who who are the or what are the industries that you really need um, support from? Um, maybe you don't have to name businesses necessarily, but you know we're on track with with this type of industry. We still need support from this type of industry. Sure. Well, one of the areas that we have uh, great interest from our students in is healthcare. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's a variety of fields within that umbrella. Obviously, right. that's a that's a very big umbrella. It is. And um, we have a number of students who are interested in going down that road. Um, and so those opportunities um, can be challenging mm -hmm. when we're talking about patient care yeah. and um, healthcare facilities opening their doors to high school students. Mm -hmm. That uh, that makes them a little nervous. Honestly, yeah. it does, and and I don't blame them for that. But um, you know, really getting them comfortable with our program and, and them knowing about the high expectations that we set for our students and um, that, that we talk to our students about the importance of things like like privacy mm -hmm. and uh, the laws that are related to the you know to privacy and part of that experience and so it's it's just you know making them feel comfortable they know they have those needs for future employees like I said we have students who have a passion for that and right. so it's about making that connection and helping students figure out exactly what area under that healthcare mm -hmm. umbrella is the right fit for them. Right. You know, I also think about the manufacturing industry, you know, welding, uh, auto body, uh, there's auto tech, um, carpentry is another big one, mm -hmm. working very closely with the Home Builders Association, the Associated General Contractors. Uh, I'm in constant contact with, with members from those groups and, and they talk to me about needs they have all the mm -hmm. time. You know, and we've done a number of events with them, but um, right. again, we have businesses we're working with to get kids out into those fields as well, you know, and some of that too is, is talking to parents as well as students about how those industries have changed. Mm -hmm. And I think there's kind of a mindset maybe um, for some people about, well, if you, if you go into that field, that's a, that's a dirty job, or mm -hmm. that's a job where you can't make a lot of money. Sure. Um, and that's really not true. And those industries, I mean, there's such a great need. And uh, you look at the price of building a home today. Right. And well, there's there's people making good money off right. of that process. And, and think of all the components that are required. Um, your electrician, your plumber, your, you know, the, the designer of the home, the, um, you know, they're just the drywaller. <laughs> Everybody under yeah. the sun. Yeah. And it, it's important to make sure we fill all of those gaps. It is, and just you know, that awareness of what does this job mean, what does mm -hmm. this entail, and you know, the more we can expose students to what those, what those career opportunities are and just gain a better understanding of what, what it means to be an electrician mm -hmm. or to be a, you know, a carpenter and um, experience that and see it, uh, get involved in that. Um, like I said, maybe we can uncover a, a hidden passion that they didn't even know they had and uh, create a great uh, career opportunity for them. Yeah. Uh, and keep them local in a, in a thriving community that sure needs their help. Right, I sure, I think back to, you know, as I made my decision about my career path, there were, there was so much information that I didn't have, that I, I just, I made the decision sort of blindly about what I was going to do and, you know, not that I would have chosen something completely different. I think, um, you know, I, I'm, I appreciate and enjoy what I do, um, but I don't think I had all the information that maybe I should have had when I made that decision. And so in order to, to expose kids and give them um, all of the information, um, I was probably one of the lucky ones to end up doing, you know, what I went to college for. But there are many that, <clears throat> that don't have that or that get through it and go, mm, no, not really what I wanted to spend my rest of my life doing. So this is important work for, for everybody. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. You know, and these career advisor, career coach positions will help students do just that, right. you know, and be able to, to reach out on a different level than, than what's, what's being done prior. So that's going to be a, a great uh, resource for our students. What is the expectation of a business then? Because I'm sure if we have any business people um, watching right now, they're probably thinking, well, do these kids get paid? Do they need somebody you know, directly with them? Can they work independently? What, what are what, you telling businesses? What we found to be most successful is if a business can assign a mentor type person mm -hmm. within their organization, kind of that go-to person for our student, 
um, obviously someone who's, who's open to that and relates well to, to high school students and is willing to, to take the time to teach mm -hmm. them and explain things as they go. Um, you know, that, that point of contact, so to speak. Um, as far as pay goes, you know, while our students are out during their school day, um, they, pay isn't necessary. Mm -hmm. They don't have to do that. Now, many of, the, our, of our employer partners are choosing to do that. Mm -hmm. um, they, they feel like that's the right thing to do, mm -hmm. I guess. And uh, certainly the students appreciate that. That's mm -hmm. kind of a, a cherry on top, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're finding many students, um, you know, we try to schedule the internships at the end of their day, and many of the students stay beyond the end of what would have been their school day sure. and work till the end of the work day of that mm -hmm. company. And um, that is paid time, you know, when they're there beyond what would have been their school, school time. Mm -hmm. um, but the employers are finding that these students are talented and they have something to offer their company. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think the hopes, you know, for us as well as the employers, there will be many situations where these students stay on mm -hmm. as employees and, you know, whether that be part-time employees so they can also go on to um, some kind of post-high uh, education right. while they work or maybe they do become a full-time employee. Yeah. Um, there are opportunities that have been created where employers have stepped up to pay for, you know, ongoing education mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, with an agreement that they stay on as an employee. Right. So it really is opening many doors, but um, it's about just committing to, to help with that learning process for our student uh, so that we know that they're well taken care of and, and those needs are being met and, you know, coordinating with, with the school, in this case, the Career and Technical Education Academy about mm -hmm progress and how things are going, you know, mm -hmm. and if we need to, to intervene on something. And right. It's just that communication, that regular yeah. communication that needs to happen. And, you know, kind of at the end of the experience, there's a culminating event where a student will come back and present on their experience to the rest of the classmates um, who didn't go out on an internship mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. what they learned and what their experience is, what is like or, or was like and then where they're going now and what right. the plan is. And so, yeah, in our, in our own department um, this past summer, we welcomed an intern from the Academy of Finance, so somebody that is skilled in accounting and, and uh, accounts receivable, payable, you know, and all of these different things. And uh, we were utterly impressed with Alex. Um, he did a fantastic job, and I was shocked at how quickly he would do the work that we would give him and um, and do it not only in the very um, way that we presented it to him and asked him to do it but go beyond and show us a few more things that maybe we didn't ask him to do but he did on his own the initiative taking the initiative and that type of thing and I think that you know for a student to be in an area that they're super interested in um, that's easy for them to do then is to maybe do a little more than than they were wanting or were assigned to do or something so we really had a great experience with with Alex and um, certainly it was more of a benefit to us and I hope to Alex than it was any work on our part and so that's really the kind of experience we're looking for for kids yeah and, and Alex is a, a great student he and is. we have so many more uh, Alex is out there, you know, yeah. we really do and you know, it's great that that he got so much out of that experience and, and that your department was able to benefit from that too and, and you know, really that's that's usually the case when mm -hmm. kids go out and you know, both both sides benefit from yeah. that and what an opportunity and you know, in Alex's case and the case of many other students, they become empowered and they really feel like they're part of something mm -hmm. bigger and there's that immediate apply, you know, applying of, of knowledge and, you know, this is, this is why I need to know this. This is yeah. how this applies to a potential career or the work world. And it just brings meaning to, to that whole, you know, education. When I saw that um, and the benefit for, for both our department and, and for Alex, you know, I re really wish I would have had that opportunity to explore in that way and get authentic experience other than just, oh yeah, this seems like something cool to do um, without having any knowledge or being on the job site or anything like that. So I just think of, gosh, the opportunities that, that our kids, mine and yours, are gonna have, that every one of the kids in this, this building will have. 
um, it's a pretty exciting time in education. It sure is. Yeah. It sure is. Absolutely. Well, we're coming up on the end of our time, and there's a ton of things about Josh Hall that I'm sure we did not yet uncover. <laughs> Any deep secrets that you were wanting to expose here today? Well, I should talk about my family. Yes, you should. Because that is uh, <laughs> such an important piece of my life, you know, and uh, married. My wife, Heather, is a teacher in the Sioux Falls School District, uh, elementary special education teacher at, at mm -hmm. Garfield Elementary. Um, just loves her job. Again, that passion for working with kids and helping kids is something that we share, and, and that's fun to be able to talk about that together, too. Yeah. Um, three children. Yes. Carter uh, is an eighth grader at Patrick Henry. Very involved in activities. Uh, we're, we're always on the run with him. Baseball, if I remember correctly. Yep, baseball. That's one of his deals. That is, and, and basketball, <laughs> basketball as well. Basketball, too, that's to right. The, We've yep. seen you at the gym before. Yeah, those seem to be the two that he's really focusing on. Um, Berkeley yes. is our third grade daughter at John Harris uh, Elementary here in Sioux Falls as well. She's headed down the road of being very involved in athletics as well. Sure. Um, uh, talented, talented little girl. Yeah. Um, and then we have a two-year-old, Hadley, who yeah keeps us on our toes. <laughs> she she's at that age, and, yeah. and she keeps us hopping. But great, I just you know I care about them so much, and it's you know when I have free time, it, it's all about what can we do together as a right. family, you know, and um, that's that's kind of the center of of my life, right. and you know. So. Kids all the way around, yeah. You're surrounded by them. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> at home, absolutely. at work, and obviously, um, many times we see in education that uh, educators are married to other educators because <laughs> there's just a sense of you get it. Yeah, you share <laughs> those passions. Yeah, yeah, that's really great. Well, I I know your eyes sparkle when you're talking about your own kids, and um, and they sparkle also when you're talking about all the other kids here at, at CTE. So it's dedicated uh, leaders in the district like Josh who are helping us take education to the next level. So thanks for everything that you do. Thanks for being a good friend to me and, and uh, for being a good colleague as well. So um, thanks for joining us here on uh, Center Stage. We hope you've enjoyed the last half hour or so. If you're interested in learning more about the Career and Technical Education Academy, give Josh a call. I'm sure he'd be happy to tell you more about it, give you a tour, lots to see and do out here. And uh, certainly if you're a business owner, um, reach out and connect and, and uh, there might be something here for you in terms of future employees. Thanks for joining us.